how do you know that the container image you are running in your clusters is indeed the one you built? How do you know that no one has tampered with that image? Is it because you're deploying the same tag that you built? If that's the case, let me tell you that it's relatively easy to overwrite a tag in a container registry or to trick the system to think that the tag you use is the tag you want. The solution to that problem is in signatures. Let's forget about software for a moment. Let's say that you're purchasing a house or getting a job. You will get the contract, that much is clear, but the question is, how do we validate that a contract between you and someone else is indeed valid? For hundreds of years, we've been using signatures, you know, signature, to validate that the contract is valid. If you signed it, it is likely authentic. Now, to be honest, it is fairly easy to forge a signature. So we started using third parties like notaries or lawyers to validate whether it is indeed you who is signing and that the signature on the document is matching your handwriting. Nevertheless, that wasn't good enough either. After all, we live in a digital era. So we moved into electronic or e-signatures. If your employer sends your contract to sign, you can use DocuSign or any other service to sign it and through that process confirm that's what you want and that's what you committed to. Now let's move back to software. The problem in answering the question, how do you know that the container image you're running is indeed the one you built, is that we do not have a way to sign a container image. Actually, that's completely incorrect. We do have quite a few tools we can use to sign container images, and today we're going to explore Cosign, one of the tools in the Sigstore project. Now, the official description says that Sigstore empowers software developers to securely sign software artifacts such as uh, release files, container images, binaries, bill of material, manifests, and more. Signed materials are often stored in a temporary-resistant public log. Now, that might be confusing. Most of the descriptions of projects and tools are confusing. I'm not sure why people do not make it simpler. Anyways, let's explain it like this. With Sigstore, we can sign software artifacts with Cosign. We can sign Git commits with Git sign. We can verify entries with record, which is just another project. We can use Fulxio. I think that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, we can use Fulxio uh, Certificate Authority and we can use Policy Controller to enforce Kubernetes policies. Now, we are not going to use the six store policy controller to enforce anything because there is a better option. I'm going to show you something much better. Also, we're not going to focus on all the six store tools, but only on cosine. Later on, we are going to see how we can combine cosine with something better, which is going to remain mystery for a couple of more minutes. Unless you read the title of this video, then you already know. Anyways, you're gonna see it soon. Now let's jump into the demo and see how we can validate whether an image is indeed, was indeed actually signed. Now, to validate whether an image was signed is relatively easy. All we have to do is execute command cosign, verify, and then pass the key, the public key that was used uh, together with the private key to sign that image and then the specify the address of the image itself, which in my case is silly demo 1010. And the output says, nope, there is no matching signature. This was not signed at all, or it was not signed with that public key. Anyways, there is no signature, so those shall not pass, which is normal. I did not sign anything yet. I just want to show you two things. First of all, how we can validate, and second, that this is a silly way to validate images. There is a better way, but we're going to get there in a few minutes. Now, before we proceed, let me explain that the key that I referenced in that command, uh, together with the, another key, the private key, was generated with the command cosine generate key pair. I did not show it in this demo, but uh, there is a gist with all the commands, and you can find 
in that trees, both those that I used to prepare for the demo and those that I'm executing right now. Now, in this specific case, the keys are stored locally on my laptop, on my local file system, but they can be stored as Kubernetes secrets as well. Those secrets can be, for example, encrypted with sealed secrets and stored as a manifest in a Git repo. And if you're not familiar with sealed secrets, well, watch this video. That one shows you how awesome sealed secrets are. I'm not going to do that now. Similarly, we can instruct Cosign to generate uh, and use keys from one of the key management services like AWS KMS, Azure Key Vault, Google KMS, HashiCorp Vault, and probably a few others. We can also use OpenID Connect to sign images. So there are many, many different ways how we can generate keys, where we can store keys, from where we can retrieve those keys, and so on and so forth. Now, going back to the command I executed, you know, cosign validate, that was a bad command, unless part of the process of signing, but that's definitely not the command you should use to validate images because client side validation today, in this day and age, is silly. It is hard to guarantee the commands like that were executed and it might be a maintenance nightmare going through all the pipeline scripts and any other place where such validation need to be performed. Fortunately, there is a better way and that's what we are going to explore next. Kubernetes admission controllers are a great way to ensure that only the manifests that meet certain criteria are accepted by the cluster. Now, given that container image reference is a part of manifest, we can use admission controllers to ensure that those images are signed before the manifest that use them are applied to the cluster. With that in mind, today we are going to use one of my favorite tools to generate admission controller policies. That tool is -da -da -da, Kaverno. And if you're not familiar with Kaverno, there are two steps, two things you need to do. First, you need to be ashamed for not knowing about Kyberno. Second, watch this video, or even better, continue watching the one you're watching right now, and then go back and watch the video I'm suggesting and find out more about Kyberno because it's absolutely awesome, even though it's not the main subject that we are exploring right now. So let me output file Kyberno YAML and that, that's the policy. That's the policy that I'm going to use to enforce, to make sure that all the manifests are signed by cosign before they're applied uh, to the cluster. Actually, not that manifests are signed, but that images that are used in manifests are signed before manifests that contain references to those images are applied. So again, I'm not going to go into details. Watch Caverno video for that. What matters right now is, first of all, I'm going to enforce this rule. So it's not going to be informative only, but simply it will not allow us to apply a manifest of certain kind. And uh, then I'm saying, hey, you should verify certain images. And in this case, only one image, silly demo, but it could be any image. Potentially, you should not allow any unsigned image in your cluster. And then we have attesters. I'm saying, hey, there should be one attester and that attester should validate that the public key uh, that is specified below is the one used by the image that was signed. First of all, the image needs to be signed. Second, the public key needs to match. So I'm going to execute kubectl namespaces production. I'm going to apply that file so that the policy is active. And then we're going to take a look at the deployment that I'm about to run. The only thing that matters really in this deployment is that the image is silly demo 1010. That image has not been signed yet. You know that it hasn't been signed because uh, I showed you when I executed cosign validate that that image was not signed. What I want to do right now is to validate that Kyverno will uh, prevent me from applying manifest that references that image. So let's see whether that's really the case. I'm going to execute kubectl namespaces production. I want to apply whatever is defined in the directory. And there we go. It says, no, thou shall not pass the admission webhook. Uh, whatever the webhook is says, no, you cannot do it because I failed to validate, to verify the signature for that specific tag. I need to sign the image before I can apply the image to my cluster. 
So signing an image and through that signature confirming that's the image I really, really want to use uh, is simple with the command cosine sign. Then I need to provide the private key uh, so that that's the key it will be signed with, the address of the image that is already pushed, that is already available in the registry, and the, the image is silly demo and the tag is 1010. I need to enter the password for my private key, and there we go. It, the image was signed and then Sigstore pushed additional information to my container registry. In this case, that's Docker Hub. Now let's verify again through the silly command line uh, command uh, whether the image is now signed with cosine verify there is the path to the public key we always validate with the public key and the address of the image itself uh, silly demo uh, 1010 and i'm going to pipe it to jq so that you can see the nice output and there we go right this time it is not complaining this time it is confirming hey this image was indeed signed by this key it is safe to use. I mean, it is not safe. There are many, 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 many other things that can go wrong, but at least now I can confirm that the image I built is the image I signed, and that the image I signed is the one that will be applied, that will be running in the cluster. Now, if I try to apply that uh, manifest that uses that image with kubectl and Swiss production, apply whatever is in the directory case, we can see that the deployment was created. There is no error. Uh, Caverno is not freaking out. Everything works smoothly. No news, good news. My image is safe. Actually, again, not safe, but can be run in a cluster because I just confirmed that that's the one that I want to run. Nevertheless, it's not only about container images. Now, cosine is not really focused on container images. Cosine is focused on enabling us to sign and verify uh, signatures of anything stored in a container registry. So that can be an image or images as we saw so far, but we could also upload uh, blobs or binaries and other types of artifacts into container registry. And if we do, then we can verify those sign and verify those as well. We can also uh, use cosine with uh, s bombs or software bills of materials. We can uh, use it for tecton bundles. We can use it for WebAssembly modules or bosoms and so on and so forth. Almost anything that can be pushed to a container registry, not only container images, anything can be uh, signed and verified by cosine. So should you use cosine? Well, to begin with, cosine is, think of it as unofficial standard for signing container images or anything that can be pushed to a container registry. On top of that, we have other Sixler projects that can come in handy as well, even though we're not exploring them in this video. Given that signing is simple, it's so simple, that it can be easily added to your CI pipelines or whichever other process you use to build and push images, there is no good reason not to sign them. On top of that, Cavern or any other type of admission controllers can be used to enforce that uh, images uh, are signed uh, and validated and verified without any additional effort. So there is almost no effort involved to use cosine, especially if you combine it with admission controllers. So should you use it? Heck yeah, cosine is a must. Use it, adopt it now. You do not have a single excuse not to use it.